Hey, Butterbys, it is Butterfly. How are you? Um, and thank you for coming to visit today. I really know that most of us have very busy lives and I appreciate when you come to spend some time here. I also want to invite you to uh, take part in the comments down below. It's a really great way to speak to and meet online with uh, like-minded people. And uh, we're part of a really wonderful tarot community on YouTube. So, you know, introduce yourself, say hello to people, and definitely uh, go and check their channels. So if you, especially if you are a content creator, you know, make mention down below in my, in my comment section. I don't think that that is, uh, it doesn't take anything away from me. I'm glad, I'm glad to invite you. I'm glad to welcome you. And definitely, you know, leave, leave some comments about what to find on your channel. Definitely. Uh, this is, you know, welcome to my living room. Welcome to my, to my uh, prayer space. So, yeah, definitely have a cuppa and uh, join in, in the conversation. So what we're going to talk about today, I'm just going to show you Instead of kind of going through just a couple of books uh, a week for this section, this is my tarot texts that I have, my reference uh, information that I have. So a lot of these texts will highlight um, very similar um, kind of accepted meanings, and I won't say traditional meanings because, you know, as I start off with with uh, some of these books, I will show you, you know, this one, which is Llewellyn, Rider Waite Smith Tarot. It's a complete, complete book of, of meanings. So what I'm saying is that some of the accepted meanings are not necessarily what he intended for them to be, uh, you know, showing in the cards uh, originally. And I found that out by looking through this book. Um, so if I were to go to any particular page, this one's quite nice, it's Three of Cups. Uh, it gives you just a ton of different kind of mismatched things that you won't see necessarily in, in other books, but that, that come from the research that has been done on, on the authors of this book, of this, of the, of the deck. So here you have always a picture of the card. Quite often you will only have a picture of you know of the card on the one side but what's really nice is that quite often they'll put like images like this of um of like people who posed for the cards or uh, indeed i think there's pictures of pamela in here as well but they they have people pose for the cards so that they could get an idea um of how they wanted the images to show up at the end so like, okay, I'll just show you this one. So here it says on the bottom, uh, Pamela's romantic, loose and flowering garments for many of her female tarot characters are similar to costuming at the uh, Lyceum Theater where she was a costume and set designer. This photo shows Ellen Terry in the Amber Heart at Lyceum with Tory Play. So some of the pictures that were collected that, sh that Pamela would have worked with in terms of, you know, po making poses and kind of giving her inspiration for the cards themselves. That's nice about this book. The other thing that's really good about this book is not only will it give you meanings and some history and some lore, and it peppers it with a lot of really interesting stuff, but at the end of every description, it will give you Waits divinatory meanings. So this was, you know, he was intending it to be you know, a tool for divination. That's not how I use it, but it was intended for that. Also, some of the meanings, if you look at the more kind of popular, what we call traditional, but they're more the accepted, the current sort of uh, meanings for the cards that I think have been tweaked to sort of um, um, be more applicable to our society as we see it today. There, those meanings are not necessarily the meanings that he, that what's recorded here. So for instance, let's just look at this. So the Three of Cups, here you'll have fulfillment, which we would agree that that that's a meaning, but you also have solace and healing, which is kind of a, I guess, what he intended. Uh, perfection and merriment, definitely. A matter of plenty, uh, victory, a happy issue. But, you know, maybe that's not the best example, uh, but sometimes you'll find some meanings that are kind of like, hmm, that's not, that's not, that's that's a new one. That's a new one. That's okay. That's what we intended. I, I, I guess maybe I'll add that to my repertoire, but... Um, so there's that. And then there's the reversed meaning at the end as well. So this one's actually pretty excellent. 
Um, I guess I should show you some of these two. This one is uh, recently just put on the shelf. It's called The Art of Tea Leaf Reading. Okay, by Jane Struthers. This one just recently kind of got on a few months ago onto my shelf for card meetings just because um, earlier this year I bought tea leaf fortune cards. So for now, um, I'm using this as a, a guide to card meeting because it uses a lot of symbolism. And this really is a darling book. I mean, it has all the eye candy that I love. So it's, you know, there's pictures of teacups and teapots and all kinds of pretty things that I really quite like. Okay, so there's that. Um, this one here is really just about meanings as well. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Tarot. Uh, and this is a beautiful, beautiful colored uh, version, very glossy paper. It gives you alternative meanings, numbers, numerology, astrological sign, element, Hebrew letter, symbol and meaning, tree of life, pathway, chakra, key meanings. That's just the little blurb that goes beside the picture. And then there are uh, sort of different um, in pieces of information that you might want. The upright meaning, uh, always with home, relationship, career, and money. That um, can be used in a divinatory sense, but I, again, use it in a sense when I'm doing readings as to how does ma money matter to you? How is it a tool for you in your life? Relationships, what do you want to have out of this relationship? How does this how does this symbol, this judgment, how does, how does that relate to what you're getting out of your relationship uh, and home? So those are the ways that I kind of look at, um, at card meanings. Um, so yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful, lovely book. Tarot tips. Tarot tips. There it is. That one's really excellent for the card reader who wants to read for other people. Um, also, if you're reading for yourself alone, and yes, yes you can, yes you can, I agree that you can read uh, for yourself. In fact, if I could not read for myself, I don't know. <laughs> Tarot's been uh, the best counselor for me in my life. So here you have, for instance, on page 50, tip number 29, health readings, and then it goes through different uh, cards and the, the meanings that you would associate with health. So for instance here, uh, nine of wands, nine of wands, you would look at head injury, shoulder, knee, ankle, jaw, TMJ, bladder, meridian. Okay, uh, that, and not just meanings, it's talking about going pro, it's talking about just basically the whole, I don't want to, you know, the whole business, uh, the whole uh, application of if you're going to be more of a professional reading, things that you might want to know. Um, so this one is getting into more of what I really like is the psychology of it. Uh, understanding the tarot court cards. Some of us do get a little kind of uneasy about court cards because they are the people cards. And then there are so many interpretations about whether they are people cards or whether they are not people cards and whether they are masculine and feminine, um, or if they have no gender at all. Um, what their place is, if they, if they represent a person, a um, situation, or uh, some kind of an event in your life. Um, and all of that can be true. All of that is really kind of depends on how you, as a, as a reader, um, interpret the cards. And, and that's why you have license to do with the, the card reading as you will. And the querent has license to take what they will from it and leave the rest. That's the art of reading. So this one focuses specifically on the court cards and kind of demystifies some of that information. Um, this is another one that I really quite like. When we're looking at the imagery of tarot, it can become very psychological. Um, and uh, Jung is not always really kind of at the forefront of um, schools of psychology, but it's definitely embraced by a magical community. Um, uh, we deal with in Jungian uh, psychology, we, we deal with archetypes and shadow aspects. And so this, this um, book, Discovering Yourself Through the Tarot, gives you a lot of different stories, um, 
not so much stories, but it talks about the cards and how they can reflect the shadow aspect of whatever it is that you're experiencing. So it's, it is an introspective tool um, in terms of like personality type as well. And yeah, no, I definitely recommend the more psychological sort of um, interpretations of tarot cards. Here's another one, tarot and psychology. How can you go without this one? This one kind of looks at cards and spreads and uh, the author gives uh, the experiences of the queerness that she has had in the past. Sorry, he has had it, Arthur Rosen, Rosengarten, um, that he has had in the past and he associates it from a union perspective and also just what the cards uh, can mean and how they can relate to the queer story. He talks about uh, behaviorism and anima and animus and psychoanalysis, psycho um, how things, you know, when, when cards present in a certain sequence, what that can mean. It just basically talks to you a lot about how it relates to uh, the person and their personality and the way that they see things. So this, this I really love. Oh, did I? Okay, that was that one. Okay, this one is also from a union perspective. Tarot is a way of life. Uh, a union, a union approach to the tarot. Again, it, this one purely goes through the cards and gives you the meanings and peppers in a bit of a uh, union perspective. But it's, I mean, it's definitely not a book of psychology for sure. It uh, basically takes traditional meanings, traditional not necessarily from weight, but the more accepted current meanings, and applies them to to a union perspective. Uh, so there's that. Terror for the Curious Mind. Uh, it talks, it, the subtitle is Awakening the High Priestess Within. This has nothing, nothing to do with being a high priestess. Um, I think basically that's kind of like, what do you call it, like uh, clickbait, the high priestess within, there's like nothing in here about being a high priestess other than the, high, the card itself. Um, this is another kind of a, a book about tarot card meanings. So for instance, here you have death, number 13, it talks about the meaning, the zodiac association, the upright situation or advice. And, um, oh, okay, I thought it gave reversals as well, but I guess it doesn't. Okay, so there you go. There's that. Oh, my goodness. We have a few. We have a few. And, you know, don't make up a, a shopping list of, like, 20 books because these ones, um, you know, buy one or two at a time and see how they fit because by the time you're done reading those books, assuming that you actually read the books or reference them, um, your the what you want out of the book may change. So don't buy them all at once because it just becomes a pile of stuff to get through. And we already have enough, enough piles of stuff. So this one though, this one on top above any other one, I I really always go back to this one. This one has been the biggest help, I think. And because it's just very cut, cut and dry, this up close, there you go, it's the ultimate guide to learning tarot, uh, a very glossy paper. Here is the spread. So each card has this kind of spread. And what you'll see is it points out number one, number two, number three. It's like, um, it's like, uh, like science, <laughs> like it's pointing out different things in the art. And then you look here in the legend, which is the other spread. So it'll point out two, four, six, eight, ten different things that you see in the card and um, give you the interpretation that goes along with it. I love this. And the pictures themselves, I don't know if you can see, but it kind of focuses on the thing that they're talking about and blurs out the rest of the card. So uh, like, for instance, here, it's talking about the bridge. So it blurs out the remainder of it and just kind of zooms in and focuses on that one little part. So it talks about the bridge, uh, the figure's faces, the different colors, the color of the shoes, the colors of the hats, 
all of those things are talked about. The fact that there are houses in the background, uh, mountain peaks in the background, and what all of those things might mean. So this one I like. If you're going to buy something, this one I like. Um, this, this one here by Joan Bunny, I have seen it online. Uh, she generously made it available. I have since tried to find it and was ch I don't know if I can still find it, but anyway, it's worth buying the copy anyway, because I mean, I like, I like to touch my books and this, this is no nonsense for any beginner, any beginner anywhere on the face of the planet. If you want to have a beginner book, um, that you will reference throughout any kind of tarot ca uh, career, this would be the book, Learning the Tarot. Uh, it is simple, simple, simple. So at some points she will give like a, um, a summary here of card meanings so that you can see the wand and the suit and you have the meanings and you have the pips. And she has another one like that for the majors. Um, and she talks about different exercises in the beginning with questions that are more introspective. But this, these are here that's the spread. So each page, each card is shown small, and then you get a write-up about the information itself, and then you get a summary. So the summary here, the highlighted words like relating to others or whatever, being sexual, these these things um, will show up in the charts that I just previously showed you a minute ago. And then, but she elaborates on each card. Uh, and it's point form. Then she will give you opposing cards that you may find in the spread that you're using and reinforcing cards. So when you find this card is associated with this other card, then it's really kind of reinforcing the meaning of this symbol that shows up in both cards or meaning that shows up in both cards. And then, of course, something that is opposing. So that is something that I really, really appreciate about this book completely. Okay, so that's that. And now... This one here was kind of like, I mean, it's cute, but, it, you know, it, I guess it would be a good kid's version of something because it is so simple. So each card, I mean, it's, it's very uh, simplified. So you have the color meaning here or color picture here. You have some simplified keywords and then a little write up on it. This was like something that I found, I think, at a chapter's bookstore um, on some promotional sort of $5 table or something like that. So, I mean, if you just want to have something that's you, that you can carry with you as a pocket guide, um, if you're going uh, for a walk or hike in the woods and you don't want to bring a great big encyclopedia or whatever, this is a good reference text to have with you. Um, so, it's really cute. Um, these ones I really like too. Spiritual Tarot, I think I reference probably the most. This is the one that comes with a bit of a shadow aspect to it. Um, it's essentially underlined, highlighted, falling apart. I love this book. Um, so it gives you, okay, let's just say here, I don't know, Seven of Swords. Okay? Seven of Swords, and it will give you readings, it will give you meanings, a key phrase, there's always a key phrase, so this key phrase is, my key phrase is rogue scamp, so that you can kind of remember that every time you see the card. Uh, then at the end of the usually two-page write-up, it'll give you uh, the shadow aspect, so here for the, for the seven, um, seven of swords, uh, the shadow side will include resorting to stealth and deception using treachery or trickery, denying your own capabilities and unwillingness to enlist help when needed, for instance, being too independent. And when you draw this card, these, these would be like journal prompts, kind of. That's how I take them. Uh, these point forms are think for yourself, determine what it is that you really want. So that would be the message that I'm taking from the card. And I like those, those last little point forms to kind of journal on as well. Um... Now, this one here is purely tarot spreads. Love it. In fact, some of them I have on my Etsy shop. Um, the, uh, the moon, the moon card spread, and I think I may have used another one at some point. So, here you go. This one will see the healing 
heart spread and then it'll give you the, the spread of the cards and then number the cards so that you can find the number and the way that you would be meaning you know to read that card so that's this number one uh number one here the root this card would show the true root of the pain and that's how you read that so yeah this whole book is basically just all about spreads. Some of them are more complex, some of them are more simplified. Um, oh, this one here, the shocker spread, I have that on my Etsy too. So, this one is more about when you want to have a business, professional tarot, uh, the business of reading, consulting, and teaching by Christine Jett. I would really, this one is nice if you do want to read for other people. It's just kind of, it talks about methods of payment, um, things that you would kind of want to avoid saying, things that you want to be able to kind of support, always support and uplift uh, your your client. Um, yeah, so this one, I mean, all the sort of the abstracts and the table of contents are typically uh, typically kind of available on something like Amazon, if they're still available to be bought. Um, but this book will give you, yeah, uh, put your client first, essentially, so it's a take-home message here. Step-by-step -step tarot. This one is um, very quick. This is basic card meanings. Uh, do not pass go. Do not collect 200. There's nothing you know, terribly fancy about this book other than you're going to get card meanings. So there's some historical origins and stuff in, in the beginning. But if you want to have historical origins uh, and complete, you, you want to look at Benabelle's because she's, she's pretty thorough. Although I, I really appreciate um, having more than one source to look through when you're looking at like historical references and stuff as well. It's always good to have more than one source. And Benabel does have more than one source, of course. Anyway, and as always with books, you have tarot spreads at the back of the book, and it always includes the Celtic cross. So this one's kind of cool. Little cartoons. Basically, how do we immerse yourself into the card? Uh, now let's see what else. Tarot and individuation. This again goes into the union sort of correspondences. It goes into the Kabbalah as well. I, I find this one, well, yeah, it's kind of over my head. I My brain doesn't do Kabbalah. <laughs> I really have tried to kind of, I need a simplified, simplified version of it, and this is not that. So if you are into Kabbalah, if you are into, um, it says here, a union study of correspondences with Kabbalah, alchemy, and the chakras. So I get the chakra meanings, and I get the meanings of the cards, but sometimes some of this book is a little over my head. Um, astrology is also something that's not in this book, but but um, is something that, that goes over my head. You won't find much astrology in any of my texts anyway, or, um, other than some valiant attempts at trying to read <laughs> some of it and trying to understand some of it. But I bought that book because it talks about um, things from a union perspective, and so I appreciate that. These two books are things that were given to me, and I don't really reference very much. They're sitting on my shelf just because I haven't gotten rid of them. Um, anyway, this is this one here. Uh, the Instant Tarot Reader. And it's nice. Um, each card kind of comes with a very large print. Um, kind of, is it eight point system? Yeah, I know it's more. It's, it's eleven. I thought it was a ten point system, but it's it's more. So they have first they'll talk about you, what surrounds you, what blocks you, your foundation, what's behind you, what crowns you, what is before you, your persona, how others see you, your hopes and fears, and the outcome. So that's something that you're going to see with all of the cards, uh, as you can see here. Okay, so that's that book. And this is another one that was given to me, I believe, by the same person, so I really can't comment much about it because I haven't read it. Uh, but it's just one of these things that because it's tarot, it's fallen into my hands, I have a hard time parting with it. Um, yeah, so there's card meanings in there. This one is a brick. 
<laughs> and for the amount of money, I remember when it first came on the shelves, I had to buy it because for the amount of money, you're getting um, a, like a whole tome. You are getting something that is valuable. So this is kind of a one-stop shop about history, about the meanings of cards. She talks about Kabbalah. She talks about astrology. She talks about like tarot spreads. She talks about things I can't even pronounce. So Benabel Wen, well-known in the community. Uh, look her up. I also bought one of her decks. Yeah. Um, which I have yet to use, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if she even remembers a conversation she had with me, but we had a conversation. <laughs> it was a thing. Anyway, um, hi, Benabel. So this one's Tarot for Dummies. <laughs> you need to have a few of these books around. This one is also kind of simple stuff. But instead of giving, I mean, it does give a little bit about the meanings themselves, but what I like about this book is the questions that it asks you. Each card comes with a series of questions, which are excellent journal prompts. So let's just look here at the Six of Cups. Um, the questions are, what love is entering or re-entering your life? Are you an incurable romantic? Are you cleaning up old family issues? And that comes from the intergenerational thing that you see here with children of two different ages and the older person, the adult who's in the background. Uh, you know, yeah, are children or childlike pleasures becoming increasingly important? Uh, is your focus on the past keeping you from living in the present? So these are all different aspects that you can kind of throw into the meaning of the card itself which is great because you can never get tired uh even if you just buy this book you can never get tired of finding something new in the meanings of the cards and of course i've scribbled all over the place and stuff because that's what i do with when i'm working with uh books okay Whew. almost done almost done 21 ways to read a tarot card this is uh kind of like a staple in in many of her collections. Um, this, in this one, the way that she groups the cards, is it this one? No, it was, it was Huggins that I did. Okay, I'm going to save that comment for a minute from now. Um, so 21, read, 21 ways to read a tarot. This one is about um, activities that you can use when you are reading tarot cards and learning about the meanings. Because remember, if you end up reading one book after the other and having similar um, definitions for a card or associated meanings for the card, it can become um, overwhelming to try and, you know, memorize uh, 78 cards and all of their associated meanings and you just can't do that in two hours no matter what video will tell you that you can learn the tarot in two hours you can get an idea of what tarot is in two hours but you're not going to be able to remember all that information and you will not be a proficient reader reader after two hours um, and to say that it you would be is kind of cheapening the discipline that people who study the tarot really have. So there's that. Um, but this card, this book gives you a lot of activities. Like for instance here, there's a activity 11.2. It's a chapter 11 and it gives you like you know, a number of different um, activities. So this is activity two and this is activity one. Uh, but chapter 11 talks about range and uh, chapter 13 or step 13 chapters are steps in this book. Uh, chapter 13 talks about symbols and the way of the apprentice. And there are exercises where you use the cards um, and get your pen and your journal ready because that's a lot of what you're going to need when you're working with this book. You need at least one deck. Um, and sometimes I've found it really helpful to have more than one deck because different decks have um, different images, obviously. And in the different images, you can you can um, take different meanings from them, and it helps me to. It helps me in my journaling. It helps me in the activities that we do in this book. So this one's very interactive, and I quite like it a lot. Um, this one by Kim Huggins. This is also well known in our community. Tarot 101. This is the one where. See, I'm looking at the table of contents here. Um, Major Arcana. Um, it, it groups the arcana, the major arcana, in 
in, in, in groups. It classifies it in groups. So for instance, you have here uh, cards that will show you about progress. Uh, and she'll put like the Fool, the Magician, and the Chariot. Cards that show you more about the feminine archetypes. She put, she highlights here the High Priestess, the Empress, and the Star. Um, the masculine archetypes she puts as the emperor, the hierophant, and the hermit. So they, you see how the arcana, the major arcana is grouped into different things. This is the template that I used when I went through the card meanings um, on my channel. If you look through the playlist uh, on tarot cards themselves, you will find a series where I go through uh, the cards and I grouped the videos with this template in mind. So, mind you, the meanings were not just pulled from this book. They were pulled from mm, all over the place. So, um, yeah, I really quite like that series. But also in here she'll give you exercises, which uh, is essential when you're learning the tarot because you need to kind of put it in an applied way. Um, that's the way to kind of, that, that works for me when I'm, you know, wanting to remember the card meanings is it becomes an experience, becomes a reflection on my own life, past, present, future, what I want, and uh, kind of an introspection on my own personality, what I, how I see myself, how I see other people in the world. Um, and through those experiences, um, through the exercises, I can reflect on those experiences. So that's why exercises um, in these books are so, you know, really, really helpful. And as you can see, it has nothing to do with worshipping the devil. It's tarot card meaning is not about, I don't even know what to say about that, that's just nuts. Um, the Rider weight Tarot Coloring Book. I bought this one because for my daughter, so that she, you know, when she was much younger, she's very much an artist. Um, I think she colored a couple of the pictures, and then she just sort of lost interest. So this one's kind of cool. It gives you like that, you know, it focuses on making really big certain of the, the cards and the card meanings. So I... I still like this uh, this book very much because it gives me a zoomed in version. Did she color any of this at all? I thought she had. Uh, oh, here's one. The heart, of course. <laughs> she did that a few years ago, so. Okay, lest I digress. Okay, 78 Degrees of Wisdom by uh, Rachel Pollock. Uh, Rachel Pollock is the prominent writer on anything tarot. Um, she definitely knows what she's talking about. This is not a book that I would kind of start with if you are a beginner because it can become very tedious. For me, I think good beginner kind of a book, well, first of all, not all beginners are created equal. Let's get that straight. Not all beginners start with the same um, basic knowledge or lack thereof. So depending on who you are, you have to choose your own beginner uh, book. And even if you know virtually nothing about tarot, it does not mean that you're starting on the same footing as anybody else, because perhaps you know a lot about art history, which puts you on a different footing than somebody who has no knowledge of art history. Um, you, may, you might know something about astrology, which puts you at a different footing than somebody else. Um, and you will see things in the cards based on who you are, and you will need things from a book. Um, you know, that are different from somebody else who's lived a different life than you. I look at things from a psychological perspective, but if you know things about astrology, then you are going to see things in the cards that I will not because I, uh, my, my brain doesn't do astrology very well. So having said that, I'm going to say that for me, a good interactive book would be one of the ones that, that really focuses on exercises because in my opinion and how I project my opinion onto uh, beginners, having an interactive book like Kim Huggins or 21 Ways to Read a Tarot, um, those would be very good beginner books as well as uh, the Joan Bunning one. That would be a very good beginner book because they're simplified versions and they're interactive. Um, this one is you sit down and you read a lot. So once you kind of have a basic meaning of, you know, what cards mean, I would then say you might want to learn more about, uh, the order of the golden dawn and the history and the, how it relates to, you know, what, or Alistair Crowley had to say about things, uh, 
the meaning of taming a lion, the, you know, it just becomes more involved. And to me, this book was more tedious and I appreciate it more as time goes by, but it's definitely, I think, not a beginner book. Um, this one's really cool. So, Secrets of Waitsmith, Tarot, and a game. This one gives you a lot of pictures. This one is a little similar to, to this one. The... Um, this one here, in that it gives you more of the creators of the tarot uh, and what they were kind of meaning. So, for instance, here, this picture and this picture, I'll show you what they say here, number 60, uh, Ada Rehan as Rosalind. So, this again would be showing you some of the pictures that Pamela Smith would have been looking at as she was creating her, her cards. Uh, some some artists work just from their head, and some people want to have a template. Um, so here are some images that later show up in the cards. Would this be the Five of Pentacles with the stained glass windows? No, it is about the High Priestess. Okay, so I buy that. Let's just see the original. There you go. So this one here. The design talks about the design. High Priestess follows Wade's wishes to depict the idea of the hmm, Shikina. I'm definitely mispronouncing that. S H E K I N A H um, P K T 13, which is a reference text for, um, I believe, Pamela Cole Smith. It talks about that, but you know, then you're getting into if if you know more about that PKT 13 and the, the reference text that that because uh, the, the tarot and the creators of the tarot have been studied at nauseum <laughs> at nauseum. So if anybody else knows about that information, you want to put it down in the comments down below for reference information for other people. That would be great. Um, so yeah, this this book here talks about the design of the card. It talks about the the images that are seen in it, like the canopy, the charioteer, the laurel wreath, the chest plate, the shoulder epaulets, and so it breaks down a lot of the meanings, um, much as you would see in in this one. But it, it instead of giving it to you in a very short part, point form, all cramped up in one page, it gives you you know in written form what they have to say about it and different symbols. So here, for instance, you see that lion? There you go. That's in creating in creating the strength card, they superimposed images like this onto here, and that's what created the strength card. Here it says, so here I'm going to read this, it says, strength card showing Pamela's real world models, additional art from photograph by authors in private collection, card were produced by permission of U.S. Games. So there we go. This one gives you a very good historical perspective on the creation of the cards themselves and the images and where they come from. I, I quite like this. I would never, I have never studied art history, but when it comes to tarot and uh, images that, that influence us um, in a psychological way, um, so I get really interested in that. You know, for instance, in psychology, there's psychometric tests, um, such as the TAT, the Thematic Apperception Test, or even Rorschach, or um, different kind of tests that use imagery, and then uh, it pulls it pulls information from people and tells you about how you interpret things, how you interpret symbols, and what happened before this picture what happened afterwards, or, you know, what will happen afterwards, uh, what's your interpretation of happen what happens in the picture. That sort of um, psychological analysis of imagery really intrigues me very much. So um, that's when I, I get interested in a book like that. Oh! Woohoo! What a great way to end a, <laughs> a video. I guess I have a few books on the shelf. And the shelf doesn't like to be manipulated this much. <laughs> As I hold this up, I hope this finds you well. It's a good thing that I'm at the end of, um, <laughs> of my video. <laughs> Yay, man, you gotta take it as it comes.
I'm going to try and put this back together. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your day.